here we go hey y'all welcome back to my channel today i'm gonna be reviewing all of my art supplies so i'm gonna start out with my drawing supplies i've kind of categorized them so let's start with markers here are my tombow markers i got them from michael's i have quite a few because i love using them so they're water-based and they have this brush tip which is really nice for like calligraphy stuff or like making really like interesting marks, interesting lines. On the other side is this, this little baby thing. I'm holding my hand behind it. I don't know if that's going to work. It's the classic YouTube hold a hand behind thing thing. Out of 10, I'd rate them a solid 8 or 9, somewhere around there. I also have some Micron pens hidden throughout here. I love micron pens. They're actually so cool. They don't bleed that much, which is awesome. I got the brush one, this blue pen, which is really cool. Uh, this is the number one. It's kind of like a marker. And then I have a red pen. This is the 005 one, which is like really thin. The biggest like fine tip one is the 08. So that's this one. And this is the graphic two, which is kind of like a chisel tip almost. And then we got the Copic markers and other alcohol markers. They're all the same to me. This is the Copic Chow marker. One side is the chisel. The other side is the classic Copic brush pen tip thing. These are the normal ones. I think you can get refills for all of them. But for the longest time, I thought the Chow markers didn't have refills, but I just learned like yesterday that they do. So that's really cool. But these are the same design. They're just flatter, I guess. I don't really know the difference actually. These might last a bit longer. I actually don't know though. And I have these Prismacolor markers too. One side is the chisel tip and the other side is this little baby tip, which is actually like, I enjoy using it actually. It comes in handy a lot. The alcohol markers are like a must have for me, especially with my drawing stuff because I like to layer down a solid color of alcohol marker and then go over the shading stuff with a Prismacolor pencil, so they're really cool. That's my process, so that's why they're so helpful to me. Next up, I have these markers I got from Walmart. I actually don't know the brand, but I see them there every time, so I'm assuming it's pretty common for Walmart to have these. Oh yeah, we found this mug at a thrift store. It's just this random boy. I thought it was so funny, so I bought it. Um, don't judge me. One side is the little baby thing it's like solid and on the other side is more of a it's kind of like a crayola marker it's like pretty much just those crayola markers but these are kind of cheaper and of less quality than the crayola markers so i'd honestly just stick with the classic crayola marker if you're planning to get anything like this yeah they're just not as good to be honest i'd rate the markers like a five out of ten if i'm gonna be honest and then i have my sharpie fine tip comes in handy a lot i like to use it a lot for everything this side is dead with the fine tip, but I use the marker side to color stuff in. Next up for drawing like marker stuff, I have my mild liners. I got these from Target. They are a bit pricey, but you can use them as highlighters for school and also just for drawing stuff. So I'd say it's kind of worth it. It has the chisel tip, like the highlighter part. And then I actually learned this like a month after I got them, but the other side also has this little thingy thing. It's like a um, cone shaped kind of thing for smaller stuff. So that's really cool. Next up for markers, I have my favorite, the Sharpie oil paint pen. They're like really, really cool. I love them so much. They're like Posca pens, but cheaper and oil based. They don't like pill away at your paper, which is really awesome. And they don't warp it at all either because it's oil based. I use them all the time. They're really easily blendable which is super cool. I, I just love them, like 10 out of 10. So they come in these smaller ones, which at my Walmart, they only have the primary colors in black and white for. The pink, light blue, orange, purple, all that stuff, they only come in this size, not the smaller one for whatever reason. So I enjoy all of them very much. Next up are my Posca pens. I mean, I don't need to explain that much about these. They give you a really solid color. They are very pricey though. I only have these ones and the white ones that I buy separately and my mom gets them too. So we just have a bunch lying around, but yeah, 
very, very solid. Not very blendable, but very solid. So if you want something like that, then get the Posca markers. Really cool. They are water-based though. They do pill at the paper a little bit and they do warp it a little bit. So keep that in mind. I have oil pastels, which are from Walmart. The brand is Daler Rowney. They were four bucks and this is honestly like such a good purchase. If you have $4 lying around, right these are great. These are honestly so cool. And yeah, like nine out of 10, just cause they are kind of cheap and sometimes they do get a bit dry, but I like them. I enjoy them. They bring me joy. Next up, I have these Crayola Twistables. I only bring these up because I've used them a couple times and they're just not as good as the regular crayons. They're just like, they don't show up as well. They're just, I don't know. I'd give them like a four out of 10. Don't, don't buy these. That's, that's the main point that I'm trying to make. Do buy these because they're the classic Crayola crayons can't go wrong with them. I have two of these and I have a whole bucket of them that we've accumulated over time because crayons, yeah. Bring out your inner child. For the last drawing stuff I have, these are my new Prismacolor pencils and some other stuff. This is the sharpener I use. It's a Faber-Castell sharpener. It opens up like this. This one says color group. I don't use it as much, but this one, this is the universal side. So I use the smallest one right here for my colored pencils. It makes them so sharp. Like, look how sharp, that's so cool. And as for regular graphite pencils for sketching and stuff, I just use my Bic 0.5 millimeter mechanical pencil. I have a whole bunch of these, probably not good for the environment, but I don't have anything else. I have a ballpoint pen as well. It's also the Bic brand, Bad Bic. They work pretty well. I would just recommend if you are using this for shading and stuff, make sure to constantly wipe it off because sometimes the ink wells up and then it randomly like blobs onto the paper and it's really just not sexy. Also, I have these blenders that I got from Walmart. I know you can make them at home. I actually learned recently you can roll up sketch paper and it basically makes these but like i have these from walmart i've had them for such a long time it comes with a whole set but these are just two moving on to paint stuff this is my big old bucket of acrylic paint all from walmart or target so this is the classic brand that i use daler rowney you can't go wrong with this stuff i'm just saying unless it's the yellow ochre which gets kind of crusty but they're all really good they're all like two dollars like 10 out of 10. Literally, I love them. I also just have this white. I got it from Michael's. It's the Artist Loft brand. So there's that. But like literally, if you have these tubes of paint though, the Daler Rowney ones, like make an investment. I started out with the primary colors and then brown, black, and white, I think. And that was good enough for me. But then I was like, let me get some purple. Let me get some green. Even though I could mix them, like I just wanted to see how they were. And they're great. Here's the palette that I use for my acrylic paint. I'm gonna peel it one day, one day. There's a lot of paint on here, but it's one of those plastic ones that I got from Walmart. It's a palette, you know, it serves its purpose. Next up is my oil painting stuff. I keep it in here. The brand that I mainly use is Gamblin 1980. This is the only giant one I have but generally I use these ones. Really cool, really cute. Love them. I have red, blue, yellow, brown, and then white, my giant thing of white. And I love these, they're so cool. I haven't mastered oil painting yet. I don't think I ever will, but they're really nice, really fun to use. Way better than Walmart oil paint. Don't try that, it's a waste of money. Please don't. I also have Artist Loft paint because I started out with this and it was cheaper than the Gamblin 1980 and the quality is just not as good. Oil paint is expensive, so like maybe to save money, just get the Gamblin ones in the first place. But like, if you're not gonna paint as much, maybe get the, the artist loft. I don't know, it's up to you. There's a lot of oil paint reviews on the internet that can probably help you in making that decision better than I can. Along with my oil paint stuff, I also have some refined linseed oil from Michaels. This is pretty cool. It basically serves as water, like when you're thinning out paint. It also speeds up the drying time because it thins the paint, so there's less like gloopy paint. 
And then the Gamsol is kind of the same thing, but it's a little different. I don't know how to explain it. Here's my varnish. I forgot the word. And for my oil paint, I tend to use palette paper just because it's easier to work with and disposable so there's not just like oil paint lying around i don't know and here are my paint brushes i keep them in this mug that i thrifted they're all pretty much from walmart i think like one or two might be from michael's but overall they're just cheap brushes i also keep my clay sculpting tools in here because they're like paint brushes but with rubber on the top they're all really cheap paint brushes because i don't really care for paint brushes like that i don't care about them like that I'm sorry. They do the job like nine out of 10 overall. I don't know. As for my clay stuff, I get my jewelry like hooks and stuff from Walmart. I also get these from Walmart. Here's my Crayola air dry clay, classic, 10 out of 10. And this is the acrylic sealer that I use. It's a gloss finish. I've tried like three different things just like this because once quarantine started, Walmart did not restock on their art stuff which is like understandable. Like it's not really a necessity to get arts and crafts stuff at Walmart, but yeah, they were out of this for months. So I had gone to Michael's and I got this Sculpey like ceramic like glaze stuff, which is supposed to be the same thing, but like you paint it on. And I also got Mod Podge spray, which is basically like this, but it's Mod Podge. And I found that that actually got really bubbly and sticky in the sun and like, not as good, not as good. Nothing tops this one. So this is like 10 out of 10. So good. And it's pretty fast drying. It dries in like half an hour, which is amazing. As for my sketchbooks, I have one, two, three, four, five main sketchbooks that I, they're relevant to me. So I thought I'd show them to you. And let's start with this one. So this is my shit book. If you saw it in my sketchbook tour video, it's mixed media. So I pretty much just do anything in there that I want to put in here and don't really care about. It was like five bucks, I think. Yeah, I'd give it a solid 10 out of 10. It's, ve it's very solid, you know? If you're looking for a new sketchbook and you've never tried these, like definitely try it out. This is the colored pencil paper that I have. It's a Strathmore brand sketchbook. I just do some random stuff in here. When I started getting back into drawing, this is what I used, so. I'd recommend like nine out of 10. This is my tone tan sketchbook from Strathmore as well. The paper is really nice for colored pencil and it's got the little, um, they almost look like hairs, but it's like texture, which is really cool. I've made some cool stuff in here from colored pencils. So I'd recommend this if you're a colored pencil artist and you want paper that's not white. Here's my moleskin journal thing. It's not really a sketchbook. Like it's literally not made for sketching or painting in. Definitely not for painting. The paper's so thin, but I just go crazy in here and she's so thick. Look at that. Wow. Um, 10 out of 10 would recommend any moleskin stuff, even though it's like expensive. You could probably find dupes that are way less expensive. They're out there. I like these, I don't know. And I thought I should also bring up my canvas paper. It's also the Canson brand. I got it from Walmart. I do a lot of painting on this stuff and it's really cool. It's canvas paper, like that's what it is. Like, you see that texture? It's really, really convenient for painting because it's not like a whole canvas. It's not like chunky, it's just paper. So yeah. Y'all already know what time it is. So I've chosen one subscriber who commented and one of my followers on Instagram that does art. So first off, we have Yosu, and they have amazing colors, a sexy feed with only nine posts, and some really nice details, and look at that collage. Next up, we have Jane Draws with a Z. They have vibrant colors in their art, a lot of really cool lines, like radiating lines off of their portraits, and their style is really coming together, which I think is really cool to see throughout their posts. That was most of my art supplies. I hope you found some insight, found some good information on this video. I hope you have an amazing day. Jalapeno hopes you have an amazing day too. Like, subscribe, comment, whatever you wanna do to help me out. Any support is appreciated. I'll see you on the next one. All right, bye-bye. I love you.